It's finally time to create our plan, our master plan. Yes, it is. This week's sponsor is none other than Dungeon Fog. Now, we love Dungeon Fog for a whole bunch of reasons, but I wanted to talk to you about the community maps. Now, these are maps that are shared by creators within the community. But look at this, folks. I'm going to scroll down here and click on the dungeon keyword. Thousands and thousands and thousands of pre made dungeons. Need a tavern in a hurry? There we go. Clicked on the tavern button, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of taverns. What can I do with these taverns? Well, quite simply, let's go to this one. Lots of different options for us, but principally, this map is ready to go. All I need to do is click on the clone and open button, and there you go, I've got the map open, and now I can edit it, change it, do whatever I like, add my own filters, remove filters. That's the power of Dungeon Fog, folks. That's what I wanted to show you this week. Now, sign up for a subscription using the code GREATGM for a discount. We absolutely love Dungeon Fog, and this is just another one of the thousand and one reasons why we do. Thank you, Dungeon Fog, for sponsoring today's episode. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy, and today we are finally there. We are finally, finally, finally making our master plan that our NPC is going to be using throughout the rest of our game. Super, super excited. Now, if you didn't watch last week's video, I suggest you head on back there so you can understand the analogy that I am busy working through today's video. Very important stuff. So, we now have our NPC, our NPC whom we have defined, we have unpacked, and who has goals, who has opposition, in a scenario that promises conflict for our player characters. It promises social interaction, and it promises adventure, and it promises combat. Those are the fundamental building blocks of what every good plan should do. We have that. We've got that. Now we need to turn it into something that is actionable, because we cannot absolutely cannot start our game until we know what the blacksmith's next move is going to be and what their next move after that is and so on and so on. A massive, massive, whoa, slow down there, doggy. This is not planning out the campaign. This is planning what the blacksmith is going to do if everything goes according to plan. Yes, two fingers for the plan, because it's so cunning it needs two. This is not planning out the campaign. Hmm. There is no plan for the campaign. There is only the plan for the blacksmith. Get that into your head. Hmm. So, first things first. What what do they need to do in order to achieve their goal? That's where we start. What do they need to do in order to achieve their goal? They need to finish building the Necro Forge. This is the blacksmith analogy. They need to finish building the Necro Forge so they can resurrect their dead daughter. Okay, what do they need in order to build the Necro Forge? You can come up with a few things. Four or five things. Doesn't really matter how many it needs to be. They can come up... They need some kind of fancy ancient dwarvish relic hammer. Make it as complex or as simple as you like, bearing in mind each additional step is an additional potential adventure for the players to go on. Too many steps, though, and the players may forget the ultimate goal of preventing the dwarf from actually building the Necroforge in the first place. So I suggest keeping it simple. Keep it down to three things, maybe. So let's say our dwarf needs a hammer. A specific type of ancient hammer. Let's go as tropey as we can. A specific type of ancient hammer, which comes from the frozen wastes of the far north. Let's say they also need the beating heart of a unicorn. Because that's a species that hasn't been used often enough. Lies. So they need a beating heart of a unicorn. And then they need, I don't know, the, the earth from a lich's tomb. Let's be cryptic about it. All right, so they're the three things that they need in order to finish their Necro Forge. Now, our goal as the GM is to make sure that the players have the opportunity to prevent them from getting these things. That's one of our fundamentals, remember that. Okay, so now, what else do we need to do in order to create this master plan? Well, we need to know what the dwarf currently has. Does the dwarf currently have some ancient dwarvish stronghold that's been forgotten about, buried out in the mountains somewhere, that they discovered whilst going on a soul-wrenched journey of grief after their daughter died? They went wandering and they found this cave which led to the giant underground dwarf fortress that no one knew about. 
Do they have that? That would be pretty cool. It promises adventures, it promises combat, and it promises some sort of social interaction for the player characters because they're going to have to figure out where it is, they're going to have to follow the dwarf there, the dwarf is probably going to have some kind of amazing kind of automaton defenses if that's part of our theme. Remember theme that we were talking about weeks and weeks and weeks ago? So maybe the theme, which could in this case be love, maybe the dwarf has built a whole family of automatons who will protect this dwarvish stronghold. Do they have any of the three things that they need in order to finish the Necroforge? That's up to you. My answer would be no, because that gives our players opportunity to interfere with the Dwarves' plan. What they do have is they do have the blueprints for the Necroforge. And those blueprints, the players might potentially be able to steal. The players could even potentially discover this on Adventure 1 or on Adventure 12. It doesn't matter. The players might find, oh my goodness, this thing is going to be able to bring back the dead. It's insane. It's super powerful. But look here, it requires the heart of the last unicorn. We need to save the unicorns. Do you see where this is going? Probably. Hopefully. Definitely. So, we need to work out what they have. We also need to work out what their resources are. And it's very important that our characters don't have unlimited power, unlimited resources. We don't want them to have unlimited resources because we're not running a 1980s cartoon series where the villain is always defeated, but always somehow has a huge amount of money or resources or whatever it is that they need access to. We don't want that. We want there to be a finite amount of time that they can operate in because they only have a certain amount of cash or resources. So what what does the blacksmith have? The blacksmith has got this dwarvish stronghold where they found a dwarvish treasury that had been forgotten about. So they've got quite a bit of cash. So they could hire assassins, they could hire bounty hunters, they could hire some thugs, some goons, some monsters, you know, that kind of stuff. So what resources do we have? Then we need to figure out where it is that they can get what they want. So where is this hammer? We've kind of done that already. It's in the north. Where is the unicorn's heart? It's in a forest of man-eating trees. Where is the grave um, soil from a lich? Well, the last known lich had taken flight to a tropical island in the south because we want our players to be going all over the place if we want to make a long-term kind of game otherwise it could be the lich lives down the road the unicorn has a shop at number three and the axe is actually in the museum which is literally across the road make it as big or as small as you like depending on how many adventures you want to add into your game finally once we figure out what it is that they well where it is that the stuff is that they want we then simply ask how does this end well as far as the npc is concerned it ends when the necroforge is being finished and their daughter is brought back to life regardless of the consequences that's how they see this thing ending now it is absolutely imperative that we do not see this thing ending when the players prevent the dwarf from building the necroforge or when the players slay the dwarf and his demonic daughter because obviously the necroforge is going to go wrong and she's going to become possessed or she'll become a vehicle for the next Tarasque or for whatever your monster is that you're going to be using. That is imperative that we don't have that in our heads because that means we'll be guiding the players towards a specific point. We take all of that away, we throw that all away, we don't need all of that stress and all of that anxiety, oh my god, get rid of it. All we need is to know that the, the blacksmith is planning on that as their final goal. So that every single step, every single time they get defeated by the players, that the players interfere with their plans, they have to come up with new plans to realign with their intended outcome. That is the actual crux of all of this, is it's always about how does the NPC try and re-achieve their goal once the PCs have f***ed it up. There's no other word for it, folks. Anyway, that's it from me for this week. I hope you found it interesting, insightful, engaging, entertaining, or otherwise useful in some kind of way. If you did, let us know what NPC plans you could come up with in the chat down below. Just drop down a few ideas. We might steal them from each other. We might, might not, but that's why we're here. Nonetheless, massive thank you to this week's sponsor. And, of course, to you for watching all the way through to the end. Until next week, happy gaming.